Uh, we're now joined by investigative journalist Mr. Gareth Porter uh, to tell us more about that story. Mr. Porter, welcome to the program. Uh, according to that very individual who I just mentioned, who spoke to us earlier here on Press TV, uh, levels of uranium have been found in blood and urine tests taken away from Afghans. First of all, does this news come as a surprise to you? Well, of course, there's plenty of uh, evidence from past years about the use of depleted uranium uh, in all the wars, recent wars of the United States, uh, including the first Gulf War, uh, the invasion of Iraq, and, and uh, as well as Afghanistan. So, no, this is, this is not a surprise at all. In fact, I think it's well established that the U.S. military has been using uh, depleted uraniums, particularly with regard to uh, the, the, uh, the bullets or, or uh, ammunition that are used by the A-10 Warthog uh, aircraft uh, and specifically to penetrate armor or any, uh, any target that is conceived to be or imagined to be hard to penetrate. This is what uh, your, your depleted uranium shells are used for. That's what they're specialized for. Uh, they are, they are ex the, the hardest uh, substance uh, that they've been able to find for penetrating armor. Uh, the, the question, of course, is why you would use it in Afghanistan, where the Taliban clearly have no tanks. Uh, the usual kinds of targets are simply not present there. But nevertheless, uh, the A-10 Warthog uh, has been using uh, the uh, depleted uranium shells, particularly for large caliber 120 millimeter but also smaller caliber uh, ammunition. Mr. Porter, do you think that uh, Afghans themselves and Kabul uh, is aware of this issue? A and also along the lines, can you describe for us what repercussions depleted uranium will have uh, for future generations there? Yes, what, what people need to understand is that uh, depleted uranium shells are uh, shells that are uh, extremely uh, heat, uh, they, they cause extreme heat in the course of being fired at the target and arriving at the target. And as a result, the uranium burns up and uh, it releases uh, very tiny uh, uh, units of uranium into the atmosphere. And this is how uh, human beings can ingest the uranium uh, in, in very easily and cause, uh, of course, toxic uh, uh, consequences for the human body, as well as certainly uh, deformities uh, in children born uh, to families who are, uh, uh, who, who are ex experienced or exposed uh, to the depleted uranium. Mr. Porter, so far the U.S. and its coalition allies have pretty much gotten away with a wide range of violations uh, specifically in the region. Just to mention a few are those committed in Iraq, uh, the drone strikes, ongoing drone strikes in Pakistan. Uh, how can this case uh, regarding the depleted uranium in Afghanistan be any different? How can the U.S. be held accountable for its crimes? Well, you asked me a moment ago, are the uh, people in Kabul and particularly officials in Kabul on the Afghanistan uh, side, on the Afghan side, aware of this issue? And I think the answer is almost certainly only in the most, uh, in the dimmest way are they aware of it. Uh, and I think that's really the problem, that this is, has been so uh, obscure in terms of uh, various issues associated with the U.S.-NATO war in Afghanistan. It simply has not been covered by the news media. Uh, in any way uh, over the last uh, 10 years or so. And, uh, you know, you have an international coalition to ban uh, uranium weapons, uh, which is, uh, has been trying to, of course, uh, raise this issue, but I think that they have not been successful in doing so. Although uh, they report that the U.S. government now uh, has uh, said that it is going to try to find alternatives to uranium weapons for the future needs to penetrate armor, uh, partly, apparently, in response to uh, uh, environmental problems in the United States associated with both the manufacture of these weapons as well as the storage and disposal of the weapons. So it may well be that in the end, it will be the consequences here at home uh, of such toxic weapons that will cause 
the United States to make a change. This, of course, uh, is the history of U.S. use of highly dangerous weapons that they always cause damage to the population here at home as well as to those against whom they're used abroad. All right, many thanks. Investigative journalist Mr. Gareth Porter from Washington, thank you for your time.